Hey medicos, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to talk about primary angle closure glaucoma. Primary angle closure glaucoma, it is also called as acute congestive glaucoma. I recommend you to watch our previous video, the basics of glaucoma. You can see the link in upper right corner, so you can better understand this lecture. Now, what is the difference between open angle glaucoma and closed angle glaucoma? Look over these images. You can see iris mechanically blocks trabecular meshwork and ciliary body which leads to yes which leads to increased intraocular pressure now due to raised intraocular pressure what happen iris pushed from behind whereas open angle glaucoma is caused by overproduction or obstruction of the outflow of aqueous humor through the trabecular meshwork of the slim canal you can see here the angle is open Let's talk about the risk factors. So I just said it is most common in middle aged, okay, 20 to 40 year. Generally in women's, Asians and those who having hypermetrophia. And if the fellow are having acute congestive glaucoma, so it is also risk factor for the other eye. So these are the risk factors. Let's talk about the mechanism. Now what happened due to relative pupillary block that is a position of pupillary margin against lens surface in mild dilated pupil what happened the aqueous outflow obstructed and that's why aqueous cannot flow out from posterior chamber to anterior chamber and the pressure is rising this condition is called as iris bombe now due to this the anterior iris blowing why due to increase aqueous pressure in posterior chamber due to this what happened there is adhesions and this condition is called as iridotrabeculo corneal contact. This causes peripheral anterior sinicae. That is, iris adheres to angle. That's why this condition is called as primary angle closure glaucoma. Let's talk about the symptoms. And we know that there is high intraocular pressure. So that's why there may be frontal headache. There may be halos around light. Why? Yes, because corneal edema. There may be sudden drop of vision or the possibilities of nausea and omitting. What about the signs? The first most important sign is intraocular pressure and it is more than 40 mm of Hg. In torchlight, we can see the eclipse sign. What is eclipse sign? Look at this image. You can see there is oblique flashlight. Yes, a beam of light shown from the temporal aspect of the cornea toward the root of nose produce a semicircular shadow. Look over here. The shadow of iris in nasal area. The width of the semicircular shadow gives an indication of depth of anterior chamber. So, in this condition, we can see the eclipse sign. On slit lamp, one can see congestions, corneal edema or hazy cornea. So, I just said due to corneal edema, there may be halos around light. Yes. If there is hazy cornea, one can have blurred vision. There may be iris atrophy and there may be posterior sinicae, adhesions between pupillary margin and lens in center. One can have cataract. And what do you think about pupil? Yes, pupils are vertically oval, mild dilated and fixed. Let me ask you a simple question. And my question is, should we give atropin to this patient? What do you think? Yes, obviously no. Why? Because the pupils are already mild dilated. So atropine is contraindicated in this condition. Remember that atropine is contraindicated. Let's talk about the treatment. The treatment part is very easy to understand and we will learn only main point which can be asked in your vivas or even PG internal exam. So my first question is what is the drug of choice in this condition? And the drug of choice is pilocarpine 1%. Okay. Pilocarpine, it is a meiotic. So what is the mechanism of action? Yes, it contracts the pupils. Okay. It contracts the pupils and it works by allowing excess fluid to drain from the eye and reduces the intraocular pressure. And what is the drug of choice in acute cases? Yes, it is IV mannitol. Mannitol is a diuretic. Okay. And what is the treatment of choice in this condition and the answer is laser iridotomy 
it creates a hole in the outer edge of the iris leading to an opening of angle in the majority of cases after the angle is widened from the procedure the trabecular meshwork is exposed and fluid outflow is enhanced so this is the treatment of this condition let's revise it quickly primary angle closer glaucoma it is more commonly occur in 20 to 40 year of age there are many risk factors the most common is middle age women asians if anyone having hypermetrophia or if fellow i having angle closer glaucoma then we we'll discuss about the difference between angle closer glaucoma and open angle glaucoma okay we talk about mechanism and the important mechanism is there is relative pupillary block this causes raised intraocular pressure this condition called as iris bombay in which the aqueous cannot flow out from posterior chamber to anterior chamber due to iris bombay there is peripheral anterior synecae and this condition is called as primary angle closer glaucoma okay this is the mechanism then you talk about symptoms and in symptoms there are four major symptoms that is frontal headache halos around light sudden drop of vision and nausea vomiting then you talk about signs intraocular pressure is more than 40 mm hg in torch light we can have eclipse sign on slit lamp we see the congestion corneal edema or hazy cornea there may be iris atrophy yes pupils are vertically over mild dilated and remember that don't give atropine in this condition then we talk about treatment and drug of choice is pilocarpine drug of choice in acute condition is iv mannitol that is diuretic and the treatment of choice is laser iridotomy so this is all about primary angle closer glaucoma thanks for watching this video and your patience stay tuned for our next upcoming video on ophthalmology